Hello everyone, Gilly here. In this video, we're gonna continue playing around with that tic-tac-toe board we built a couple videos ago. Uh, in the last video, we built an IO monad to kind of encapsulate the effects of the game so that we didn't have to actually write impure code. And so that's where we stand right now. But what I'd like to do in this video is I'd like to build an easy mode AI, which will play against a human player. And basically what the easy mode will do is it'll randomly select slots in the board and try to play pieces until it can. Maybe it'll win, maybe it'll lose. We're not really sure. Uh, this is actually going to be kind of funny because when I first started programming a long time ago, a tic-tac-toe game was one of the first things that I did that was more real. And in that game, I implemented an easy mode AI that was randomly playing pieces. It'll be kind of curious to see how this implementation turns out because my implementation then was so horrible. I was brand new to programming. It took thousands and thousands of lines for me to implement a simple tic-tac-toe game on Android that had an easy AI which would randomly pick places. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use our effects here and we're going to change our effects to be place letter instead of reading a line. So basically we're going to take in a letter and we're going to return back a string. So this will give us the opportunity to decide, given a letter, who's going, a human or the computer. And it'll also give us the ability to basically do what we did before, return back a position of the piece. So instead of read line, let's say place letter. And let me make sure I don't have that defined elsewhere. Okay, I don't. So place letter is going to look a lot like read line, except instead of accepting unit now, it's going to accept letter. All right, so what is this actual read move look like now? Well, we're going to take the opportunity to place a letter given the actual letter that we're currently on. And honestly, I think that's all that we need to change in the actual game logic in order to inject an AI or inject the decision of piece, which piece we're going to play um, based on whatever we want, based on the letter that comes in. So instead of saying read line, we're going to say place letter. And something kind of fun about this is we can actually ignore the letter in and just do a read line. And I think that'll actually give us the effect of the game we actually once had. Let me try that really quick, but this will not change the game. So that shows how um, extendable our stuff was, although it looks like we have a bool coming back on 197. So we'll need to wrap this in parentheses because F-sharp can't parse it otherwise. All right, and as you can see, our game is unchanged. We have a human versus human game still, just by injecting um, a different function called place letter, which is really a read line under the hood. So that's actually gonna be our human logic. But what about our computer logic? Well, let's make a new function, which will be called um, easy, AI versus human. And what that's going to do is it's going to be a function, which if it's X, well, we'll say X can be the computer player. So the computer is going to say, hey, I want to play at position something something, where something is rand 1 to 4. Rand 1 to 4. Now, I don't know if F sharp has rand functions built in. It might, it might not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say rand start to end equals system dot random system dot date time dot now dot millisecond so let's seed a random number given now's millisecond now next from start to end so that's actually it I think that's the computer logic so what about a human if we have an O well what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did before we're just going to do a console read line to give a human an opportunity to play a piece. So actually what we can do is we can say easy AI v human and we can call this console AI because it's a slightly different effect now than it was before. It's not just console operations anymore. And I think that's the entire implement implementation with, I don't know, 10 extra lines of code tops. Um, so let's see how we did. I haven't run this, so... Fingers crossed. Hey, awesome. So X went, and what did they do? Well, they went to one, two. Let's see if we can uh, beat the computer. It'd be really sad if I can't beat the random AI. Oh, he hopped across. Oh my goodness. Uh, let me take the middle. Okay, oh, so look at this. This is one of the funny things about the random algorithm. It's not at all discerning the current board. It's not looking at the current board to decide where to move. So it's just gonna keep randomly trying, and it tried a whole bunch of bad positions first, which is kind of funny. Um, 
Oh, okay. It looks like I'm going to win. So let's go to 3-1. Oh, no. I almost left a, left a gap there. Let's go to 1-3. Let's block him. All right, so I went to 1-3. Oh, yep, the random AI didn't cut it. It didn't block me here. So if I go to 3-1, it looks like I win. Awesome. So I hope you enjoyed that. We implemented a random AI into the tic-tac-toe board in very, very little lines of code. Almost just the code that it took to implement the algorithm for the AI.